Ding Dong, Avon Calling, I know. Uh, so this is number two in our uh, Rising Sun series, uh, yet another uh, Japanese instrument from the fabulous uh, Rose Morris Corporation. So let's have a listen to this and I'll try your rock and show. Let's do that. Pick up time and starting with the bridge on the distorted setting. <laughs> to it on clean. And again starting on the bridge pickup. <laughs> Is, is that we can reasonably accurately date this because it's got the open book headstock uh, which means that it's not later than 1977 and the Avon guitars as a brand didn't come into existence until 1973 so it's somewhere between those years. Uh, 
what have we got? So construction wise, or a little bit of history, I think, first of all. So these are the budget version of the Shaftesbury's. The Shaftesbury's were so named by Rose Morris because their main showrooms on Shaftesbury Avenue. Uh, so uh, to save a few quid for a start, they put the capped tuners on. And I will be honest with you, after that, after the tune, the little tune that we did, uh, when I did the pickup run through and touched the tuners, it stayed perfectly in tune. Um, you've got a, a truss rod that definitely works, that I do know. Uh, my neck material, I don't know, maple, possibly maple, maybe even mahogany, but certainly something stiff. Uh, you're on a rosewood fingerboard there, and I reckon those block inlays certainly are pearl. Of course, the headstock is bound, as is the bolt on neck. Uh, the body now on the so this is the model one three four zero four and and apparently it seems they nicked the model numbers from Rickenbacker. There you go. You could do it. You could do whatever you want in the seventies. Guinness label instead of a tax disc in your windscreen. So um, certainly the three four three four zero threes, the Les Pauls, were largely uh, plywood, but I rather think that this is a solid lump of wood uh, because well I don't see any lines here although they're just maybe they're just well concealed i don't know and i can't remember what it i've had the scratch plate off but i can't remember what it looks like inside speaking of scratch plate pickups yes the pickups uh, for all the world a pair of humbucker looking things and they certainly are not you will see some figures uh, back here with the pickup output readings and you'll see 2.5 uh, but they're both about 2.5 with one and a quarter in the middle or something like that and that is because they are in fact single coils in a humbucker shroud uh, this was a commonly adopted practice uh, back in those days uh, but you know they make us so 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 it's somewhere really in like a weedy strapped territory but you know they sound fine um so we've got a stop tail and tunematic with the plastic saddles, which I quite like. Uh, this one, amazingly, has still got all the original witch hat knobs, and you've got your three position toggle switch with the exhaust pipe in the expected place. Uh, if you are in the market for one of these, well actually if you're in the market for one of these, I'm guessing that you've got a proper Gibson SG and you just want to rewind yourself to 1976 uh, for a bit. But, um, uh, nostalgic uh, value so uh, what I would say is is make sure it plays because I did put a bit of a shift in on this to make it play right uh, we now have the string height at the 12th on the high E at 1.25 which is where we like it and there's no choking or buzzing but let me tell you it was pretty much unplayable when it came in so always take that into consideration. And really, that's it from our Ding Dong Game on Calling uh, tonight. So thank you all ever so much for tuning in. Uh, I'll say adios amigos and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ra.